to Facebook Live. Um, hope everybody had a good summer. It's feeling very autumnal here in Ireland today, wherever you are. Um, in Wexford, definitely, it's very autumnal. Um, so let's get into this week's blog. Um, just to say, I did a training on this in full yesterday in my group. Um, it's a free group. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below. And it took nearly an hour to do the full training. So I promise I'll try not to keep you that long this morning. Um, but basically it's just some tips to help the reduce the stress, the anxiety and get you back into, um, you know, to school. Um, if that's what's happening in your area, sometimes um, you may be only going online because of the pandemic. People are still doing online schooling in different parts. Um, so, you know, here in Ireland, as far as we're aware, we're going back to school. Um, so let's get into it. Let's talk about this. How can you help your yourself, your family um, and reduce some of that stress and anxiety and tension during those first few weeks going back to school? Um, and, you know, this is about now and trying to get routines in place. But really what we need to be thinking about here is, you know, planning organization but also a lot of communication if you can have the conversations with an older child and i'm talking about seven plus age depending on your child you're going to have to judge this you're the expert here on your own child so judging your own child but that kind of age group onwards teens talking to them about different things um you know and maybe if they're moving to secondary school um or that would be high school um in other parts of the world that you know you've got to set the ground rules there might be new ground rules put in place or new house rules put in place for the first time so it does take a conversation you know needs to happen between you and your child or teen so bedtimes first thing bedtimes bedtimes can go out the window over the summer and holidays people are a little bit more lax about it so try and think about bringing the time back a little bit even five or ten minutes each night over the next few weeks until they're actually back it'll just help and the same in the mornings um you know if you can get them up a little bit earlier even by five or ten minutes can make all the difference when it comes to um you know the week they go back to school now i know my own grandson my youngest grandson's going back to primary school thursday of next week so definitely when you you know i'll be getting him up earlier um over the next few days and he'll be going to bed a lot earlier in the next few days um and the same the following week my the eldest the eldest grandson is going back to school so it definitely things will be changing in the next week or two in our household um so you know we have to we have to think that think strategy they're going to be very cranky that first week we have to allow for that as well so this kind of helps if they can get enough sleep, it does help if they're getting enough sleep. So try and bring it back at night time to a little bit earlier going to bed and getting up, up earlier in the morning. If you can, um, you know, if there was a summer camp going on with the pandemic, it's not always possible. It may not be happening, but think maybe safety and family days out. It, it can help, you know, having the odd family day out um, can help with those, um, you know, those changing the, the routine around mornings and evening bedtimes conversation here you need to be having even if they're very small and the next one is number two the point i'd make was it's all about safety the next few are about safety i'm going to bring up about safety so this is about their physical safety it's important that they um you know they know the little ones you know starting off maybe primary school that they know their name um, maybe it's great if they know how to spell it um, and a lot of them are going to preschool now they go for one or two years to preschool in Montessori um, and then they're going on to primary school so by then they definitely know their name how to spell their name um, if they can learn off your mobile number or if they have it on them if they have your mobile number on them if they you know in the bag somewhere in their bag or that that's also good um, but also to know your name it's in case they would get lost you know they need to know mummy and daddy isn't your name to a stranger they need to know your name so that's where the tiny little ones um the other thing i would say about physical safety here is they need to know who's supposed to collect them from school so um and that includes in an emergency 
Um, you know, it's all well and good. Yes, we fill out the forms for the school, but the teacher does not know that emergency contact. They don't maybe not know initially who that person is going to be that is going to collect your child. They are to a big extent relying that the child knows this person really well. So, you know, they have to, the school has to know the name of the person um, who to contact and, um, you know, that they, they are the designated person. And even in an emergency, they know the school knows that. But they may not have a physical recognition on that person. So they do rely on the child knowing that person. So please make sure your child knows who that is. That's important. That's a really important one there. Um, traffic safety. If your child has gone, you know, maybe they're transitioning to secondary school here. Traffic safety is important how to cross the road, maybe remembering how to cross the road if they haven't done it for a while. Or maybe they're f this is the first time they're actually walking to school uh, because they're older, they're going to secondary school, or they're travelling on a bus. An awful lot of children in the countryside may have been driven to primary school, um, but then they transition to the bus because the, they're going to a town much further away. Um, no safety. You know, they need to know, um, you know, the rules about getting off the bus, how to do it properly, putting on their safety belt on the bus. You have to have this conversation. These are about their physical safety, so you have to talk about it. Something else to talk about here, and I think it's really vital we have these conversations with our kids, is bullying. Um, now, I, there is a link to Spun Out, which is a website, and I think they have a really good page on that. So if you want to get more information on this, I think you should check out that web page. There's a link in the blog, and as I said, it's in the description below. But you need to know, one, the school's policy on bullying. Two, you need to be having a conversation with your child, no matter their age. Age-appropriate conversations on bullying. What it is. You know what types of bullying can occur um online in person all the different types of bullying that can occur you know why do people bully why bullying is wrong you need to be having really good conversations with them about this and it's not going to be a one-off we've chatted about the, the bullying policy even if you or your child never experiences bullying some other child in the class or in the school could be experiencing bullying. So it's important that other children have know about this, what's going on, um, how they can help, how they can support this person, how they, who do they report to. And even if it isn't in school, if it's in, um, if they see it among their friends, if they see it in a club or an association that they're a member of, who do they talk to? Who is that person that they talk to? Um, again, it's going to be dependent on their age, um, but you need to do, you know, have this conversation with them, you know, what to do if they are bullied or if somebody else is bullied. That's, it's a really good um, and important conversation to have with your child. It can't be ignored. I don't think it's one we can ignore. The other one we have, we can't ignore here is online safety. Um, now, I've done a video on this before on 20 tips to keep your family safe online. Um, and you can check that out again. There's a link to that particular video in the original blog. Um, so you can do that. But again, this isn't a one-off conversation. But you need to remind them maybe of the house rules that you have about online safety. Um, you know, the grounds for accepting friend requests. Um, you know, what's your house rules for accepting um, or getting access to mobile phones. Um, what's the rules around tablets. Um, being on the internet what are the house rules because those house rules that you have set as parents should translate to school to anybody else's home you should be having this conversation and multiple conversations so what are your house rules on technology um, what are they allowed to access and what are they not allowed to access what happens if they're getting bullied online what do they do um, what's your policy on, um, you know, clearing histories, having passwords, private passwords to their different devices? These are things you need to think about as parents. The other thing you need to think about here is being very up to date and tech savvy because kids are much more up to date than we are. It, technology changes so fast. Um, and things are happening and we're not even aware of it sometimes. So keeping up to date and eye on what's going on um, 
is a good idea and I've linked out to a man called Wayne Denner he is very good at keeping parents up to date on technology and the latest trends and technology and social media trends that kids get up to so do check it out I've linked to the blog that he has but also um, you know he has a Facebook page so do check him out he is very very good next one number five talk um, talk to them about returning to school um, I'm going to talk next week about separation anxiety disorder and in my group my free group I will talk about um, and do a training on anxiety separation anxiety and tips for that and um, helping your child with that and um, so if you do want to join the group please come and join but we need to talk to the kids they've been out of school um, an awful lot of them maybe have not been back in physical school for a long time or they've been in out in out um, going online and then returning in person and then back online we need to talk to them about how that feels for them how are they feeling and and get them to talk about themselves don't force the conversations um but it, you know if they bring it up or you know you can you can start the conversation with are you excited about having you know the new day at school um you know we're, what are we buying talking about the uniform talking about books things like that and bring it around to how they're feeling um please never demean discount or um, embarrass your child about their feelings please do not do that um you know, ask them how you can help on those first few days going back to school. Again, it's going to be age appropriate, but please do not discount the teens in this one. Don't discount. I don't care how old the child is, even if they're going to college or university. Don't discount it. It's going to be nerve wracking um, for them. So you've got to help them, you know, talk about how they're feeling, but also ask them, how can I help you? Is there anything I can do for you? I'm here for you. Reassure them that you're here for them. Sometimes that can be just, you know, for younger ones, maybe uh, if you can possibly um, arrange that you will pick them up from school those first few days. Um, if that's not something they could normally do, cook their favorite meals, um, you know, something that be reassuring for them. Put a note in the bag, um, you know, the lunchbox, you know, thinking about you. Um, I'm so proud of you. Little things like that can really help them. But ask them, what did you what would you like me to do that I could help you here? But allow them, the main point here is really to allow them to talk about how they're feeling and, and you know, their concerns about returning to school. Um, the morning routine. Number six, this one. This is, it ties into the first one I said about bedtime and reducing, you know, bringing back that bedtime and then getting them up a little bit earlier. But this is the most stressful one, I think, for most parents, this bedtime routine um you know so again it's about having a conversation with your other half if you're in uh, if you're married or in a relationship um what helps you know what has helped in the past and what hasn't helped what has been going wrong for you um and then once you two have discussed it to talk again having that conversation with the kids bring them in ask them um you know wh what do you think we could do here we're having a little bit of a glitch here how could we help how can we help ourselves around this morning routine to try and decrease the stress um around you know getting everybody out on time and out maybe out to a bus or out to the car on time the point is to come up with some effective strategies and i'm going to talk about some of those in a second um but you know it's it'll be trial and error so have patience with yourself have patience with the children um and try and start these now for the next week or two whenever they go back um try and start them now before they go back so you can you know it gives you a better idea a more relaxed time maybe that you can adjust the playing field but you need again to talk about what's going on to come up with an effective problem um solution you know solutions to the problem of the morning routine that you will work for you as a family so a few of those ideas might be to plan the lunches um again big stressor trying to prepare lunch in the morning is crazy what we did as a family is the lunch was made the night before and then it was um two things happened one 
the kids either put it in their bags, but as they get in their bags the morning of, uh, they took them out of the fridge and got them in. And that was their responsibility, age appropriate again. Um, but two, as they got older, they became responsible for making their own lunches. And that became part of, you know, uh, the house rules that they were responsible for making their lunch and getting them in their bags and, um, you know, making sure they had something to eat that day. You're teaching them, um, you know, life skills here. Um, who makes your lunch? You do. So you have to, you know, we have to teach them how to do these things. And um, the other thing is to maybe have a bit of a declutter on the uh, clothes in their room, maybe have a declutter in the bedrooms. Um, so, you know, organize the clothes, have a little bit of a holiday declutter, get rid of things that no longer fit them, pass them on down or pass them on to somebody else, recycle. Anything though that has a happy memory, you can maybe put it in a keepsake box, Um, you know, just because you might not have a happy memory about that piece of clothing, they might. So, you know, we get attached. It's very subjective as to what we get attached to. So, you know, they can have a keepsake box where they keep things. There can be another box too, if they're not sure, particularly with the older kids. And you really, really need to bring the teens in on this one. Don't go in and declutter their bedrooms. This, oh, this is a, that's a battle you don't want. Um, Get them involved, you know, and, you know, say to them, okay, if you're not too sure, maybe we have another box that we put on top of the wardrobe or in the wardrobe, if you've got room or under the bed, and we put things that you're not too sure about whether you want to keep or not. But in six months, you're either using them or they're gone. You know, you can have that boundary in place there. But make sure they have the supplies they need here. Um, you know, they have the waste paper basket in the, in, in the room, a laundry bin in the room. And if it's going to be their their place for homework, um, then, you know, they have a desk, they have shelves to put things on um, that you can do that. The other thing is to have a clothing system. And this is number nine, have a clothing system in place. So... You know, it can be hard to hang up clothes when you're smaller or even when you're older. Um, so maybe cubby holes would be better. Hanging baskets, hanging cubby holes in the wardrobe rather than hanging on more on hangers in the wardrobe. It might be suit your tile better. That might be a better system for you. The other thing I tried and I found was successful was I hung clothes together. So underwear and socks were pegged to the clothes. So the whole outfit was pegged together and hung in the wardrobe. It just meant getting smaller kids dressed much easier for me um, in the mornings. It just made life so much easier. The other thing I did, particularly with school socks, everything was the same. And I got laundry baskets, uh, sorry, a laundry bin, you know, those fabric bins um, that you could, again, you can just hang them up on hooks um and a drawstring bag really like a santi sack but smaller and i put all the socks in there but they were all exactly the same so no matter how many times i put my hand in it was the same sock it just made life so much easier for socks socks are dreadful shoes and socks are the two key ones um you know that seem to go missing um the other thing would be gym equipment like pe gear once it's washed it can go in the bag and then the bag can go in a designated spot. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, so, you know, maybe talk number 10 is normally talk to them about a, a bedtime cleaning routine. This is about, you know, setting some boundaries, teaching them life skills, basic hygiene. So keeping the clothes off the floor, clutter free cups if you allow them in the bedroom to be brought downstairs after use rubbish and waste paper bins it just means that the room is a little bit easier clothes are brought down to the laundry room particularly the older they get they definitely should be doing that and helping maybe with the laundry um and that again it's going to be you when you decide they can do this um but sometimes in order to get the message across on some of these you have to allow them suffer the consequence. So if the PE gear or gym clothes are not brought down to laundry and not washed, then they have to use the dirty ones. They'll know or they go without. They'll know not to do that again. You've got to let them suffer the consequences here. So they've got to bring down, um, you know, the whole idea is they've got to make sure their stuff is getting cleaned, 
they're keeping the room reasonably tidy i know that can be very difficult and um, particularly with teens um but you know they're you're teaching them life skills of how to clean a home and to respect property so again it's a conversation and if you can get them into the habit of tidying up from a very young age then it does make that easier um number 11 is to set the central staging area up near the door now you can use a back door or you can use your front door but if you've got the room to set up one designated area that the night before and this is really going to help in the mornings if you have it all set up the night before so one area where school bags go shoes go shoes definitely school shoes definitely um coats um, hat scarves and gloves as appropriate um, as we get into worse weather if they're using p or gym gear that goes by the door the night before um and then it's all ready and done the evening before it's like the lunches this is a practical thing you can organize the night before it's also a habit and if we can get into that habit and get them into that habit it just reduces the amount of work you have to do in the morning and reduces the stress on everybody um so you get everything the night before the other thing is you can actually put them in the boot of the car if you're if they're going with you in the car then you can put it into the car um and make sure it's in the car again the night before if i'm going to gym in the morning then i put my gym gear into mom or dad's car because I'm, that's who i'm going with in the morning um so you know once homework is completed they can pack the bag for the next day and put it in the car and that only leaves them the lunch box to, to be brought out to the car so it it cuts down on what you have to do so these are thinking about effective strategies that you can use to reduce your stress and get people out on time in the morning and reduce that you know stress level down in the morning this is a homework for you so um most schools they get you to update the records every year um it's a bit of a pain but you know a necessary really necessary and it's really vital so number 12 update medical and school records so do they need any boosters some kids you know different ages they need different boosters um you know do they need a checkup with the doctor or the dentist um has any of their prescription medication changed and the school needs to be aware of that have they had any educational reports or assessments done over the summer the school will need a copy of that and you will need an appointment so schools are generally open right now even though the children aren't back you need to be getting on the phone and making that appointment with the principal the class teacher the year head whoever it is you need to be making that call and saying i need an appointment and to bring a copy of the report and get the ball rolling on getting um you know a supports put in place for your child so make sure you fill out the school forms as well and all the update if you're maybe your telephone number has changed um you know you could have moved house but the children are still going to the same school you could have just moved in the area so think about it any allergies that came up think practical here on that one but get that's one you need to get on the phone with now and you know fill out make sure everything's up to date and get in if you need a, an appointment with the school for any reason then you need to be making it now 13 homework let's talk homework here now is the time to set up and put the supplies in place for um a homework area and also the conversation about homework you need to think about it what's your policy your home rules policy on homework um so you know get the area sorted out again as i said if they're doing it in their room um then they have a desk um where they can do their homework in their bedroom but if you've decided no we're going to designate an area um where they come in they do their homework then you need to set that now is the time to be setting that up not the first day back to school or the second day when you're rushed and you're trying to set it all up um what's the school's policy on homework you need to know that um again get the kids on board particularly the older they get what are going what's the consequences going to be if they don't do their homework um what's your homework policy at home when are they going to do their homework are they going to do it straight away when they come in from school are they going to do it um you know they're going to get a break watch tv do some gaming for an hour and then do homework maybe they don't do it until after dinner 
you've got to decide when you your children are going to do their homework but the kids need to know this um you know if they have a school activity are they going to get a break after they come home and then do their homework after the activity what if they do tutoring if they're at tutoring extra tutoring and a lot of children can be at extra tutoring what's the home, what's the policy on homework then do they get a break and maybe have dinner and then have homework time if they're in if they attend tutoring if they have a disability and they're attending tutoring what i did was i went into the school and i spoke this spoke to the school about homework and for the night they were doing the extra tutoring they didn't have to do homework that night now that's a lot easier in primary school than secondary school we worked it in a way that um they got off english homework the night they did extra um extra tutoring when we went went to secondary school so that again might be a telephone call that you need to make um you need to think about these things you need to also think about can they have music playing while they're doing homework can they have their mobile phone on can they be talking with their friends conversations you need to talk to the kids about this you need to get them invested in creating that policy though around how when and where they do their homework because if they see it as fair and reasonable they're more likely to run it smoothly for you there won't be many battles around homework and um, so less stress all around as they say um, number 14 is reconnecting with friends they may not have seen their friends all summer um they may have lost connection there so you know again obviously with safety in mind that you maybe arrange for them to to meet up with their friends before they go back to school before the day arrives two things i would say here one is don't push um don't push the friends um old friendships just because you're still friends with their parents don't push the child to be friends with them kids grow out of this they grow out of friends how many people have you are you still friends with that you went to school with um you know so think about that think about that one don't be pushing friendships friendships change particularly around secondary school and going to secondary school for the first time um things change so you know l don't push that one the other thing is if they're moving schools and they don't know anybody in the school if they, their friends are happen to not be going to that school look and see is there anybody else they know even if it's an older cousin um, or family member extended family member that's going or if it's a neighbor even if they're older just to have somebody to walk in with on those first few days until they make their own connections is really a reassuring for them um you know and sometimes when they're seen hanging out with an older child they can be seen as cool too so you know um think about that um last one 15 not quite the last one um don't over schedule them please don't over schedule them they do need time out they do need time to relax and de-stress particularly and i would say this particularly about final year um, kind of fifth and sixth year in Ireland so 17 18 19 year olds in Ireland doing their final years in school a lot of pressure there so please make sure they are taking downtime they're taking time out just to relax listen to music whatever they're into they're not over scheduling themselves with homework a job or you know extra activities so please do that and the last one I'd say to you is give yourself a break like just give yourself a break so you know going back to school is stressful try and take some time out for yourself as well um you know try and reduce your own stress levels around this as much as possible do activities that are going to help you I've, I've talked about activities that you can do if you need more i have loads i give weekly tips in my in my free group um so come and join us but have patience with yourself have patience with the kids it's going to take some time to readjust um, and be aware of that just plan for that we're going to have hiccups we're going to have mistakes it's a learning experience we're going to have that readjustment time again so just try and you know um reduce your stress as much as you can and i apologize that i went on for way longer um 
uh, than I than I normally do. Um, so, but as I said, the full training went on for nearly an hour yesterday in the group. So if you want to check that out, do come and join me and I will talk to you all again next week. And it'll be on separation anxiety disorder. Um, and good morning as always to Deirdre. And yes, they are. <laughs> I agree with you. Sorry, she just posted up a comment there. Yes, they are. They keep the, the connection keeps messing around on the internet this morning. Um, and I will talk to you all then. And thank you all for listening as always. And um, have a good and safe week.